This is DSN TV, showcasing the ability in disability. Proudly brought to you by the PA people. And welcome back to uh, our coverage for the USABA Goalball Championships from Atlanta. You're on Disability Sports Network showcasing the ability in disability. This game here we've got is between the Sting and also the, as I've lost my headphone feed altogether, there we go, between the Orphans and also the Arizona Sting. So we'll just make sure that we've got the feed running and we do and we will get to the teams as soon as uh, Matt is able to so but we have number two for the Sting throwing the first delivery uh, seven I should say uh, for the Orphans and next ball straight through the gap between the number seven and so the Orphans are uh, already down 1-0 now as Matt's uh, looking at his uh, details there so we've got um, I think we've got Bill playing in the centre for the Orphans. Great ball by number seven. I want to find out who the number seven is for the Orphans. He's got a lot of power, I must admit. Uh, as I said, and as soon as I get the number for the Arizona Sting, I'll certainly give you their names. Bouncing ball on this occasion into the chest on the left wing on this occasion for the Orphans. Number one throws the ball a little bit wide on this occasion. I was just seeing they've got a bench. No, they haven't got a bench. So they've only got the three players. Bouncing ball on this occasion into the chest of the number seven. Picks up, goes with a quick return. Fantastic ball. Doesn't get through the C corner, though, on this occasion. Number six does the chasing. There's uh, Matt still frantically uh, working, and uh, he's got everything tangled up. And unfortunately, when he's moving his headphones, it's cutting me, <laughs> me out altogether. So there we go. We'll just try and rectify that if we, if we can. So I can uh, actually hear... Here, Matthew, when he does speak. What have you done to yourself, mate? Have you tied yourself up in knots? Pretty much by the look of it. As the next ball is a out thrown out on the to the A post. Seven like takes it, races to the left hand side of the court. It's like fifty shades of mat over here. Two uh, and long ball has been called, which is a bit sad. He's managed to get himself all tangled up and Hopefully untangled eventually, have you, Matt? Yeah, I am, just getting the rosters up. Very good. I'll just turn you up just a, a little bit, Matthew. No problem. So, anyway, we've got a long ball penalty. Number seven to, de to defend. And it looks like number seven is going to be taking the ball. He is number seven. Goes across court ball, but blocked. No goal. Has ran away just late. If he had have stayed laying there, he would have kept the ball out, but he just jumped up and moved. So, time out for the orphan. So, that'll give us a couple of seconds up our sleeve here. Yep. After so everything. Now, I've moved, my computer's moved on an angle, so I've got to try and fix that. So, Got the rosters here. So, for, okay. Ari for Arizona, number five, Luke Patterson. Yes. Uh, number two, Tony Brune. Yep. Uh, number seven, Nasosi uh, Jernigan. Okay, well, that's who's playing at the moment. We've got Jernigan on, I know that. And then uh, Walter Atted is number nine. Okay. Um, one Number one is Oscar Quintero. And then Jake uh, Chikowski. That's the so they've got a strong team. I'm trying to pick up who's actually on court. Uh, looks like Tony Broom's on the bench. So I think that's... And Luke Patterson's on the bench. So I think that's... Uh, Oscar Quintero, number one, number seven, Jernigan, and uh, number nine, Walter Ted. The next ball into the back of the net. Great ball there by uh, Jernigan, that was. Uh, so 3-0. It'll be interesting to see how... Uh, is it Arizona Sting? I don't know what they're like. I haven't seen them. I know that they've got a point to prove from what uh, Tony Brun was saying earlier on. Oh, we've got Jernigan now with the ball. Goes with a discus throw. And hits the post and out. Well, no, not out yet. Running up the line. Uh, there was actually a ball over there. So they actually called ball over, didn't but 
It's down. Bouncing ball. Miscasion straight through the gap, but number one gets there for the Orphans. Have you got their team, Matt, or are you still looking? Uh, well, the only thing I can tell you about the Orphans is that number nine is Bill Frohlein, and then there's no numbers for any of the other players, unfortunately, that has been given to us. Okay, well, we've got seven, so and... Into the back of the net, off the one on this occasion. I'm not sure of his name, so... 4-0. This could be... So it looks like the orphans. So four in seven out. They've got a. I didn't know they had a sub sub sitting there. Yeah, they have four players. Uh, they okay. I can give you their names if that uh, yeah, would be okay. I don't have their na their numbers, but I can at least let people know who's on the team. Yeah, well, there you go. Uh, so they have Wyatt Hildebridge. Yes. What uh, up, Brandon? Songkower, Brandon Songkower. Obviously, we mentioned Bill Froline. Yeah. And then we have Carl Hedrick. And then D'Angelo Willis. Now, but is he here? I, 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 I believe he is, yeah. Okay, because we have a oh. penalty. Atlanta. I mean So it could finish up, in theory, being 6-0. Uh, well, I think one of those players, one of those penalties is against Atlanta, uh, against Arizona, I mean. So number four is defending in its eye shade penalty. Well, there's no number four for Arizona, so that must be for... Yeah, it is, uh, it is. This is for the orphans. Yep. Yeah, orphans, this is. I don't is. know why he, said Arizona, why he said Atlanta when he said penalty. I don't know either. But anyway, we know what's happening and we can give the listeners and the viewers the correct information and uh, I'm sure all the uh, the crowd know exactly what's uh, going on. So, I showed penalty here and then there's going to be delay of game penalty. And I think the delay of game penalty is against the orphans as well because they weren't ready. Yep, they weren't ready for the substitution. So, so here we go. Anyway. That's right. Down the line, he's pushed it into the... Out of court. Well, unbelievable. Jake's not going to be too happy with that. That's a wasted penalty. It is indeed. Now, delay of game penalty they're going to be playing. So, so we're going to see now. Yep, it certainly is against the Orphans. And number one is going to defend. So, they should be up 6-0. They should be. They but should be up 5-0 anyway well, now. Well, we'll find out if they'll be up 5-0 right after so this. So it looks like we've got Journey. Oh, goes down the line and into the back of the net. This one here is a bit of ball. About uh, a metre inside the A post. The score is now 5-0. And we are yet to cross the three-minute mark of the game. And we still have a substitution here to take care of. Yeah, so that that was the substitution actually with four. So we've got four, four off, right? four on, four on, and, we'll and uh, seven off. Seven it was. Off, yep. I don't know why they've taken seven out, but anyway, yeah, on no. we go. Number four's throwing this ball here, and it's just gone wide. So as I said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we don't have the numbers for any of these players in this particular team. Bouncing ball on this occasion into the chest of the four on the right wing. Does the chasing pass it back to Froline in the centre. Froline. Froline? Froline. Bill Froline. Froline Bill. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a German cowboy. That's right. <laughs> Bouncing ball <laughs> up and over and into the back of the net. Unfortunately, it's come off Froline and uh, gone over the top of the one. So into the back of the net. Score is 6 0. Um, I'd hope it doesn't happen, uh, Matt, but I can see this being very, very fast. I think Jake would like that. High ball. Yeah, Jake would want that. I think Jake would like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure he would. So he can uh, get going faster and feed little Jay and maybe get some of his other players in to, to get some court time. So, Oh, Jake's calling timeout. That's a good call. Uh, interesting. Scenario. So now they keep calling this this orphans team Atlanta. So I don't know if these are like the Atlanta orphans or. Well, they they're, they're, we're actually um, down as Atlanta. Yeah, and they're actually coached by Mulhern and Simpson, Matt Simpson. So now 
the Renegades, weren't these originally the Atlanta Force, or are they a different so side? So the Atlanta Force uh, originally used to be a combination of the Atlanta Force and Georgia Renegades. It used to be a combination of Eddie, John Mulhern, Joe Maleonard, Daryl yep. Walker, Matt mm. Simpson, and uh, uh, one other player, uh, forgive me. So we've still got the Josh Force Wellmore. and the Renegades. Yeah, so we still have them. They're just separated into two different mm. teams now. And what's the reason behind that? Uh, it's because the young guys wanted to play with each other and the old guys wanted to play with each other, for all I know. I mean, I think they just felt like they had a better chance that way. And the penalty situation, and it was a another goal. So for a long ball, a high ball, I should I say. I think you're going to see some subs here in a minute from Jake. <coughs> Maybe. I but you know what? If I was Jake, I'd want to get run them straight out as quick as I can. And I know that may sound callous, but it's a national championships. You're a hard man there, Mr. I Tony. am next ball. Cross to the one. He gets behind this one here. Blocks that nicely. It's okay. We're two, we're two very hard men on these, on these players. Next ball thrown by one, but just goes wide. Well, <laughs> look, there's other tournaments where you probably wouldn't do it, but I would certainly would at the national championships. Yeah. Um, you, the can't next ball thrown by wide. you can't leave anything to chance. No, not anything. at all. No, you have to take... Take the game by the throat and just choke it out. And the simple thing is when you say the goal difference could come into it, if you can hold a team to zero, then that's a huge advantage for you. A plus ten is a huge advantage. You know, so Absolutely. you take advantage of it. But see, that's why I have a really hard time with this new goal differential preference because it's like it really makes it hard for players who need to get some court time to get in because you're forced to run up the score. Yep. So one out, seven in. The interesting thing is, now, are they going to be ready this time? No. Not at all. Well, yes, they are, because he's standing up and the referee's checking his eye shade. So he can only, that's all he can do. So one out, seven in. Um, yeah, look, I, I, I can uh, look. I can see your point. Um, maybe what needs to happen is that there needs to be... Um, a two division tournament and I say that with the elite in one tournament and then you have a tournament which is for the um, up and coming or new whichever way you want to look at it maybe it's that's something you need to look at well, that's sort of what they did with the women's to be honest I mean they sort of made a four team elite pool with California yep. and Rose City and New Jersey and Atlanta and then made a developmental pool well picked up by Bill Froland from the center He's got through, yes. There you go. So, quick, great work on that occasion. Now, as I said, you'd rather have a 10 nil win than an 11 1 win. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, well, that's not going to happen now. So, anyway. Looks like that ball's going to come back. We yeah, it will. It's yep. out from noise in the crowd. So, we'll reset the clock and do it all over again. That's it. And we've got uh, eight. Uh, 35 went for a quick throw now we've had a change with number 7 gone into the centre and it's a high ball straight away which is a shame but uh, that's, a, that's what happens he's a very good player this number 7 I'd like to know who he is he's just work on his keeping the ball down a little bit um, I think that's Terrell Willis it may well be this ball has been thrown straight at him blocked now see if you're Jake Joukowsky, you can't be happy with that. No, and he won't be. And he'll talk to his team about that after the game. I mean, he's not going to put that extra pressure on them in the game. Well, obviously, he didn't go to the Tony Telfer coaching school. Well, you know, Jake's the kind of coach. I mean, he's he's well aware of those things. He knows his players knows, and he knows his players don't want to disappoint him. So he's not going to put that extra pressure on them in the game. Unlike uh, yours truly, who has done that and will continue to do it. <laughs> Although not with the juniors who I currently coach. I was going to say, be afraid, juniors. Be very afraid. No, certainly not the juniors. It's one of the reasons why, uh, when asked if I would take up a junior role, as the next ball is into the centre and kick wide and out. I, um, <coughs> excuse me, spoke to the boss and uh, said she said yes. And uh, as I said, I know I can give a lot to them and relate. As the next ball is a nice ball thrown by the number seven. Quick return on this occasion. To Bill now is moved across to the left wing and oh he's taken out the bench 
at the far end of the court into uh, Jake Joukowsky. Now, just so our listeners know, they Bill didn't actually charge Jake Joukowsky on the bench. That would be really funny, though. <laughs> it's just <laughs> no. Oh, no. you, Jake. No, not at all. But it was just a, a wayward, <laughs> wayward throw. <laughs> yeah, we've seen those. Bill throws again. Yes, blocked out. Now, see this. Is, they picked up now the officials' timeout. Now, you know what the interesting thing is about that? Because it's an official's timeout, the clock has to restart, the 10 second clock. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is that if it didn't, they would have been struggling for time. Yep. So they got a break there. They certainly did. Cross court ball on this occasion. Great piece of defensive work in the centre by uh, number s seven. Because the disc is bouncing ball into the centre. Sk kicked forward by. Uh, number eight, who does the chasing, picks it up, lays it off to the seven, hits the centre again. Cause this is, guys, he's looking better and better, the seven in the centre. Should have been there probably from the start. Although Bill is a good player. Up and over the top of the net she goes on the seaside. So here we go. So Oscar Quintero is coming out for Luke Patterson. Mm -hmm. uh, I think what it is with Bill is that Bill's very serviceable in centre, but I think he tends to get eaten up a bit on the quicker pace balls. And, uh, you know, uh, so that's why sometimes it's just better to slide him over to the wing and let him work on offense and yeah, try to be a lockdown defender on the wing. He's certainly done a good job with his offense on the wing. There's, a, there's no issue with that at all. So I reckon you and I could still get out there and play with some of these guys, Tony. I'm pretty sure we could. I mean... Everybody's scoring, it seems like, over 10 goals a game here in this tournament. So. Yep, that's right. Cross-court ball on this occasion, but only as far as the centre. Nicely blocked by number seven. Comes in now, goes with the discus throw. Hard, flat throw, doesn't quite get through on this occasion, but great piece of power in the ball. Lays it off to the right winger, number... Uh, oh, control just in the nick of time. By number four, goes back into the goals. Throws the ball down into the centre. Lay it off on this occasion to the right winger. Hits it back through. Nice piece of work in the centre by this uh, centre player. I'm very impressed with his his performance. It's too bad we just don't have any other numbers and names. It's no, well that's right. So I do apologise to all of our listeners. And uh, they have been there. We've had people come up and say, well, look, you didn't call his name. Well, unfortunately, if we don't have the number, we can't actually do that. Yeah, we don't know every single person. No. Yet. We haven't had a procession line. So line out, ball now on the left wing. But we invite anybody to come by and tell us who these people are. By all great. means. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this is all for you. A long high ball. My ball number... Oh, Jake's not going to be happy about... No, well, it's a high ball for... Not for... It's a high ball against... Uh, it's not the Arizona State. Yeah, no, but I was thinking like... I was trying to... It was actually the player who reacted that way. He threw the high ball. I th that's what threw me off. Yeah, yeah, I that's it was right. One of, I thought it was one of Arizona's players no. who uh, reacted. Well, Jake won't be happy now because it's been blocked, and it was it was not a it wasn't a good throw. It wasn't a good penalty throw. No, no, no inventiveness at all. I mean, you don't need to get cute. Just throw it hard and fast, and that's two penalties. And away from B. Yep, that's two penalties almost right down the middle. Bill with picks it up, throws the ball back. Centre player picks it up, sends it straight back to number seven in the centre for the offence. Lays it off to four on the left wing. Goes with a twisting action into the A B side, B C side, but then pass back to the C to the right winger who goes with a bouncing ball into the centre. Great work in the middle. He's looked so much better than when he was on the wing. Uh, number seven. Very, very, it's looking quite comfortable there as the next ball is thrown wide into the seat post. Number seven now for the Sting. Runs out and goes to hook it back. Great work by the centre. Lays it off to Bill on his right. <coughs> ball comes back in. And a Hard that throw. We would call them other people's names, but we only know Bill from that side. Bill for Froline. So... Ball now drop back into Froline on the right wing. Solid performance after looking like they were going to go down in the uh, screaming heat as Bill Froline splits a gap beautifully between uh, between uh, uh, B and C. 
And uh, as I say in the classics, nothing but net. <laughs> yep. So great work. After getting it to a, after getting it to a huge lead of seven zero, they've um, they've uh, conceded a number of goals late. So I don't think Jake will be overly happy with this. Yes, he'll be able to give a couple of players a run, but you'd still like to, if it comes down to goal difference, he'll kick himself. Yep. Ball now with number seven from the centre. Again, another ball very close to a high ball. Well, Jernigan, he was really effective offensively early on, but he hasn't been as effective since then. No, I don't. I don't as I said, I don't know what the issue is. Uh, he just kind of got gun shy on us all of a sudden. Well, this is right, and uh, unfortunately that happens sometimes, as I've just dragged my chair over. If uh, people wonder why I was uh, sort of disappearing off air momentarily, but that's all it was. Tony's doing push-ups on the ground. Bouncing ball, but nicely stopped by the centre. Now, I think he might be one as he wanders across and sings and goes with a discus throw, aiming for the A-B gap. Picked up on the... Uh, so Beats him on this occasion. No, he got fingers to it and pushed it wide. Fantastic piece of agility shown by the number seven for the orphans. I think that is D'Angelo Willis. Now, if I call him that, it'll be somebody else. Well, yeah, I know. It but I will he call just, him Willis. Well, he just, he looks like the player. He looks like Willis. Yeah. Cross-court ball on this occasion by Journeyman. Doesn't get through. Before has the ball now. Cross-court ball. And blocked. No, not blocked. Got through the defences. Looked like it had been covered. Oh, gee, I tell you what. I don't think I'd like to be uh, the boys if Jake... Uh, although you said he's pretty placid, but... Well, I mean... Disappointing. Well, he, he... You watch Jake over a period of a game where he's up 7-0 and then loses a 7 nothing lead. You'll see... Then you'll see a different side of it. But, you know, I mean, he's not going to... You know he's gonna he's gonna give his team pretty much the kind of motivation they need yeah. on any point in the game. Willis next ball throws it out. He'll yeah. give them a kick in the butt if they need it. Ball drop back into play goes across court. Willis gets a hold of it. The ball's running across and it's going to run out. Bill just shadows the ball across the sideline. Takes the throw now. Left handed into the centre. It goes well. We've. Uh, Doing, they're doing around 247 or thereabouts to go in the half. A bouncing ball on this occasion, picked up by Willis. Lays the ball off on this occasion to the number four. Cross court ball into the middle. Comes back down to the fast throw. Up, no, not over. Good work by Willis. Goes with a quick return into the centre. Doesn't get through. Lays it off to left winger. Comes in now. Good ball. Willis comes across in front of Bill Froline to defend that ball. He's. A man possessed at present. A throw line with the ball now. Ball down to the centre. Laid off to right wing for... Excuse me, the Arizona Sting is a bouncing ball. It's been blocked by the number four. Going to Willis. Willis sends a ball into the AB gap, but defended on this occasion. They've, so they've fought their way back into this game. Absolutely, yeah. They've definitely taken. I think, you know, making that move really solidified this lineup going forward. I think this uh, is the lineup you're going to see the rest of the game. Yeah, certainly. Is Bill Franklin throws the ball on this occasion, but just pushed wide. So, right winger now for Arizona goes across court. But uh, Willis is, uh, if it's uh, D'Angelo Willis, he's uh, having an absolute blinder of a game. Well, the reason why I think it's Willis is because I remember speaking with Matt Boyle and, and Jerome Black off the air about uh, Willis, and they were describing the way he moves in center and how he really can cover a lot of ground, and I'm seeing this uh, kid play out there. Looks like he can cover a lot of ground. So. Oh, look, he certainly can. That's why it just makes sense to me, but... I stand corrected <coughs> if it's not. If it's not, we'll all apologise. But it's better than just calling him number seven all the time. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, not sure about the others. So they may be just one and four. As the next ball across, court ball is thrown out. Um, look, the, the Sting started off 
on fire and now I'm actually a little bit, uh, well, disappointed with the application, which it would be as if, if, well, I would be, you know, I speak for myself only, if I was certainly a player and you let this slip to this position mm. and take away the ascendancy that you had because at the moment the orphans have all the all the running. Yep, all the momentum's on their side right now. That's and, it. And, and the Arizona, <coughs> they look a little stung themselves at this point. Yep, that's it. Now, this could be in trouble here. No? You put the ball down in time. I know it said that because it was almost a 10 second penalty. It's a bouncing ball on this occasion. This time it's got over the top and into the back of the net. So bad luck on that occasion. Now, that was actually number. Four. Yeah, that was on number four, but in any case, yep. now it is eight to three in favor of the Sting, so taking back some of that momentum. Yeah, still got a long way to go, though. So the center now picks it up for the Sting. Goes down the line, aiming for that same spot again, which was a smart move. Ball comes up to D'Angelo, and that will be the half, so a solid half. We have an eye shade penalty. An eye shade penalty. And I believe one of the orphans. I'm not sure though. Yep. Looks like. Oh, there we go. We do have an eye shade penalty, so it could actually be nine. Nine three at the half. We will see. After it was seven zero, then it was a run of three unanswered goals, and it could be now two unanswered goals at the end. Now that. Players know better than that, surely. They do, yeah. At a national championship, you shouldn't be, you know, you shouldn't be struggling with fundamental rules of the no, game. No, not at all. You, you need to know these rules. Yeah, and you get what uh, you get what you uh, you deserve. So they're going to have to reset the shot, cl uh, the uh, halftime clock, and that's a. Uh, and you notice in this situation, Jake's not declining the penalty? Nope. <coughs> nope, which is something I found a little bit odd earlier, because remember, I believe the money men declined a, a penalty at the end of their game. Yeah, just to, did not make any sense. But the ball has been blocked by number four, so... So that is... Okay, that's half, so... That's half, so no damage. No damage was done. And I guess uh, you'll only do it once in theory, won't you? Or twice in that yeah. game. <laughs> That's it. So what we'll do is uh, we'll go to some music and uh, be back with you for the start of half number two between the Orphans and also the Arizona Sting. Ladies and gentlemen, we do apologise, but unfortunately sometimes you've got to deal with uh, some technical issues, which is what I had to deal with uh, that occasion but I can let you know that if you've been watching and I do apologize because the audio stream has been down but is now rectified but if you have been watching it you'll currently see that the score is 8-5 in favor of uh, the sting over the orphans and that was after the orphans got away to and there's a high ball to number two for the sting that's uh, Tony Brun isn't it number two yep Tony Bruno in the game now yeah okay. he's uh, throwing a high ball there won't be happy about that. No, not at all. So let's have a look and see what his defensive skills like. And I know he's just coming back from an injury, isn't he? He is, yeah. Really bad ankle injury. Mm. So anyway. So I think this uh, is uh, Willis going to take the throw. Looks like it. And another goal. Looks like he got a piece of it. No, no. No, no piece of it at all, no. Number two out. So Jernigan back in. Yeah. Bruin out. Yep. And he, does, he looks a little bit dejected, actually, just quietly. Well, he's been really unhappy with this play this weekend, and, you know, he... No, but the thing is, it's, it's, it's a long way to go yet in the tournament. It is, yeah. I think, he, you know, for him, it's just he, he missed the tournament in Salt Lake City, and that really bummed him out, and he was really looking forward to come back on very strong. And sometimes it takes a little bit longer, you know, no matter how good you think you feel or how... How good you've looked in practice, you know. This is game speed. Game speed's different than practice. So we've got one seven and eight on court. One with the ball now, bouncing ball. Over the back but blocked wide. So this is gonna go the distance. There's not gonna be a mercy in this after a seven nil lead. 
It is uh, now currently 8-6. So they've scored uh, six goals to one in recent times, the, the orphans. Mm -hmm. And it's all happened uh, since we believe it's D'Angelo Willis has gone into the centre. So Walter's coming back in for Arizona. I don't know who's coming out. Number nine's coming back in. So you should have Walter. The seven, nine, and... One, right? Yeah. Seven, so nine, Oscar one. Quintero, number one, number seven, Jernigan, and number nine, uh, uh, Walter uh, Atin. And the uh, South Florida uh, boys dropped by. Uh, Ryan Showalter and uh, Jose Morales came by. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you didn't hold them for a chat? I'd, unfortunately, they uh, couldn't stay. They just wanted to come by and say hi and give a shout-out on the on the web. So Beautiful. Good to see them. Yeah, absolutely. And as, and as I say, if anybody's around here and they want to come by and say hello, we're more than welcome to accommodate you. Come and say say good day to us. We'd love to uh, love to hear from anybody. Yep, absolutely. Now we we really would like some feminine touch up here. Yes, we've. Uh, I don't think we've had a single uh, fe uh, women's player visit yet. No, not as yet. So no? we can really use uh, we can really use some women's company up here. This is a great ball, hard flat ball. This time it's stopped by Jernigan. Jernigan now. Goes around behind um, and then comes back to the right and throws promptly where he was aiming, which was off court. So uh, well, maybe it'll be good for them to get a hit out this might and get over a win. Uh, as we said, there's no easy no easy games in this, no matter what people may think. Um, there we have uh, Oscar with a bouncing ball, but blocked by Willis. Willis in the centre has really put this Orphans team back into the go. Close to a high ball there though. But blocked wide, not called. This now is uh, uh, Ryan in the centre. Did you say his name was? Ryan Showalter. Brian. No, yep. Ryan. Ryan, Ryan. Yep, Showalter. And Oscar on the left and Jernigan on the... No, Ryan doesn't play for them. He stopped by. You're thinking of Walter. Yeah, no, well, who, that's what I was saying. Who's the centre for... That's Walter for Arizona. Thank you. So, now with Oscar. Oscar with the ball now. Bouncing ball. Into Bill. Picks it up nicely for the Orphans. Goes with a flat ball. But uh, picked up by Walter for... And lays it off to Jernigan. Jernigan runs right out in the round in a huge arc and gets back into position and blocked wide so huge run around there on that that particular occasion so the next game now cross court ball into the center on this occasion laid off now to oscar on the right on the left wing bouncing cross court ball out they've lost all their rhythm here yeah, it's just like they haven't been able to regain that composure. Yeah, that's right. So, and as I said, it's, uh, we're about halfway through the second half. There's a ball straight into Walter. Lays it off to Oscar. Oscar with the, girl, the ball now. And Oscar and Jernigan have now swapped positions. And a high ball has been called. And if I was Jernigan, I'd run and pick the ball up, which he has. Yep. That's what an offensive player does. He wants that ball at all times. Yeah, that's it. So he's uh, now got the ball in hand. So Jake giving instructions to him before the penalty. He's gone out to the live, and he's... What a magnificent ball. Sometimes you just sit in awe, and being a right winger, the ideal shot is straight down the line. And I just saw a perfect example of that straight down the line there by Jernigan. Yeah, Jake will certainly Pretty be to watch. Yep. So the score is now 9-6 in favour of uh, the Sting. But the Orphans have fought back well here. Cross-court ball on this occasion. 
And oh, I thought that was in the net actually. But no, just uh, around the corner. Oscar with the ball now, bouncing ball into the centre though, up and over, and it's loose, but into the hands of uh, number four, and just managed to push the ball wide. So next ball is going to be pushed out and uh, comfortably outside the court area on this occasion. Born out with uh, Jernigan runs out and going to do the same thing as Tommy put the ball down and it ran off at uh, the wrong angle so that was the ball D'Angelo Willis has come over and picked this ball up now it runs around goes with his discus hard straight ball across but no no success on this occasion the ball drifts wide outside the C post Oscar now goes down the line and uh, oh, they seem to have lost all their very very stagnant the Arizona Sting at the moment the way they're playing I think they're just playing scared to be honest Isn't it so they held a lead and I think they're just afraid to lose it so they're afraid to Jernigan runs around flat ball flick the tape so no high ball but D'Angelo Willis sends a quick return back Jernigan good enough to get it what a great ball on that occasion but just wide thrown by uh, by Walter from the centre so Next ball was out, and it's a line out as it beats the goal judge as well. So, and uh, the players down there, oh, some of the players at the back with the uh, pads and everything lying around everywhere. We let the ball go through. Jernigan now hooks the ball back across, but straight into the centre. They've got to keep it away from there. Quick return, almost a high ball to Willis. And time out for the Arizona Sting. Matthew? Well, looking at where we're at with the game here, I'd say that uh, Jernigan's really starting to pick up the pace, and I think Jake's going to appreciate that because he's starting to look like he's playing a bit more like he played in the first half. Uh, not looking like there's so much fear there as there was. You know, sometimes when you have a big lead and you lose it, you know, you start to really play outside of who you are as a team, and I think Jake's just trying to refocus these guys. Give props to the orphans, you know, for hanging in. Uh, you know, I mean, it does sound kind of weird when I say that, but these uh, these orphans, there's some talent on there. You know, Bill steadying them, the the veteran leader, you know, and and the center player number seven. Uh, we think he's Willis. He's he's playing really well. He's you know, it's really flying around that center position, taking the gaps away from them. Is that a penalty? Penalty one? number one. Oh, and Oscar Quintero. Jake is not going to be happy about that. What's the, what are we at? 9-6? For the Sting, what did they say? Yeah, for the Sting. Hmm. What what it's for. You know, reaction from Jake. I'm not sure what the penalty was for. Uh, at this point, Jake's just trying to refocus his guys and not try to cause any meltdowns on their you know, mental lapses. So it looks like Willis with the ball. Great piece of work. Great work. Nice block. I've still got no idea what the penalty was for. No. The score is 9-6, though. I believe that's right. Uh, it is, yes. And how much time left? Uh, yes, so I'll tell you in just one second. I'm just dragging my chair over. It's the next ball. It's been locked out. Just push wide. 4.37 to go. Quick return on this occasion. And uh, blocked by Jernigan. Jernigan now running towards the centre. Hooks the ball back at the C post. Blocked on this time by the number four for the Orphans. Goes across. And Walter picks the ball up and is going to take the throw himself. So, noise penalty. On the cr no, not on the penalty. Just a yeah, no, timeout. Yeah, noise. that's what I said, noise. No, no penalty. No. It's a quick ball on this occasion. It's got through by uh, Brian now. There's no Brian. Are you talking uh, about Walter? Uh, Walter, okay. Yes, yeah, so 10 6 in favor of Arizona? Yes, yes. Uh, all the names are starting to meld together at the moment. That happens that way sometimes when you've been broadcasting for uh, almost going on, what, eight hours straight now? Yes, so uh, seven hours, eight hours straight. 
We're just doing name mashups at this point. Jernigan with the ball now to the left of centre. Runs back, hooks it across, doesn't get through on this occasion. Willis now picks it up, goes with a quick throw, and a high ball has been called. And he's, look, I'm, I'm not surprised. He flirts with the high ball line all the time with every throw. Yeah. Um, some referees will get away with others you won't. Uh, that was comfortably over, so. So look now, Jernigan's got the ball. It's gone to the left. That's what he does here. It's gone down the line, and it's been blocked. See, he's, he tried to be as stealthy as he could about Too that. Too cute. But, yeah, but he... He showed where the ball was before he threw it, and that gave Willis enough time to, to go over to that side of the court. So He covered a lot of ground, though, giving him, given that uh, that point. He gave a lot of ground. So Anyway, the ball's with uh, Oscar now. Goes across court on this occasion. This time the four picks it out. It's going for the it's going for the C corner. Cross court. This time Walter picks the ball up. He's going to take the shot from the centre for the sting. Again, a good ball, but it's fractured by Willis. Doesn't achieve anything. Settles it down. Goes back to his position. Gives himself some more room. Pushes his winger out to the left. Goes with a hard flat throw on this occasion. Jernigan's got this one covered. He picks it up. Looks better when he goes towards the centre and runs out and hooks to the hooks to the right, but didn't work on this occasion. He hooked it well out of court. So we've got now approaching uh, three minutes to go, so fantastic of thus far. Next ball has been blocked nicely by Oscar. Oscar now. Bouncing ball into the centre, but this time Willis is there and he's looked very good in the centre. Throws the ball off now to Bill, and he's throwing the ball. So we've got a substitution. So Oscar Quintero's coming out, Luke, is, uh, Luke Patterson coming back on. There you go. So I guess the idea now is to try and nail this game as quickly as you can. I think so. We've I think got the three strongest on the court at present. I think preferably Jake would like a few more goals going into the later parts of this game, but at this point he just wants defense, I think. Yeah, and then the thing is they were up 6-7-0. Six, 7-0. Six, seven, nil. Seven, nothing. And uh, they've, uh, well, the, in the last, they've 6-3 um, against them. Yeah. Uh, so, and if you're the orphans after the start, you've got to feel reasonably happy with that. I think so. And so, because they certainly could have been blown away very, very early on. Well, just imagine if they had found, uh, you know, the recipe to, to compete with this team earlier in the game. They might have... Well, that's the right. The result might be different if they had maybe tried this line of alternative From the start, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, and you know, that's the interesting thing, so... You anyway, know, we shall see. I'm just having a look to see. It looks like number five's gone across to the right, uh, left wing. Or has he gone into the... No, that's nine in the centre. That's still Walter in the middle. Yes. Jernigan on right, Luke on left. So, anyway, Jernigan now. Sends the ball down looking at the C corner. Blocked out on this occasion by the number four for the orphans. Throws it and goes for the AB. All turned but not enough on this occasion. Luke now with the ball for Arizona Sting. Bouncing ball. Not going to get over them today, this time. Picked up by D'Angelo. Bouncing ball. That one there very well might, but no, the ball wasn't on the side of the Orphans on that occasion. Just could have gone anywhere. Went straight up and down in the one spot. Cross-court ball. Aiming for the C corner. Just now going back to the to Bill who's thrown the ball out and it's a line out and the ball will come back in on the left hand wing for for the Arizona Sting comes in now and promptly throws the ball out on that occasion Luke, uh, Luke wasn't uh, in the right place at all no uh, it was a little lost on that one comfortably out so next ball has been blocked out so now, just to let our listeners know, if uh, Matt, you can have a look and see what our next game is, just so we can give our listeners a heads up. 
Yes, absolutely. Yes, we have about one ten left. Yeah, we certainly do. Good effort that. Or one seventeen actually, so not too bad. There's a this has got to be almost ten seconds. That is a long time. Going for the quick return on this occasion journey again. And was lucky not to get uh, penalised for a high ball. Didn't get it. Next ball. It's been thrown back but blocked out by Luke on the C side of the court. Time out by Jake Joukowsky. So, 54 seconds to go. And, uh, well, look, they should get a win. And uh, you, you can, you're always happy with a win. But uh, we'll just uh, wait and see how they come out again from here. Well, I have no doubt it. Some stage we will speak to, to Tony Brun a bit later on and see what uh, happens. Yeah, so looks like the scheduled game is for 3.30, which we're about 15 minutes behind at this point. So that game is California, I'm sorry, the Northwest Avalanche versus the Boise Blaze. Okay, so this will be a five-minute break. Now, what will happen is that immediately after this game, I am... Uh, going to be taking stepping away from the microphone for about four or five minutes so i do apologize if i miss the start of the game however it will be up on the tv so i do apologize but uh, i will be back in in plenty of time i'll put you on with some music but as soon as i do that then uh, that's what will be happening so as soon as the game's over we'll be going straight to straight to music just giving uh, everybody, everybody a heads up in relation to to that because there is times when you do need to actually uh, get up and actually stand away and do something else apart from just commentate, as you could well understand, Mr. Hines. I can, I definitely can. So, but we will be back to do to do it. So, we'll, uh, but it will be on DSN TV. The, the games will be on there. So, um, but we will certainly let you let you know. But that's what the situation certainly will be. So, just having a look to see, checking out some things on my roster from here so the next ball cross court ball but D'Angelo Willis is playing out of his skin if that's who it is he's absolutely having a blinder at present so the next ball has been blocked by Walter and actually blocked and no, ch no chasing I, I, I just can't work that out Matt I cannot work out why you don't want to chase the ball <laughs> Well, I think that's just they're more concerned about setting their defense than they are about keeping the possession. Well, that could be it too, making sure that they actually win the game. Maybe that's what the what the aim is rather than anything else. So, so into the last ten seconds of the game, and it should not be a penalty. Certainly won't be now that it's thrown. Has been blocked out. Line out with one point four seconds to go. So just letting our listeners know you're on DSN. We'll be back with you in around about five minutes or so for the start of the next game between the Avalanche and Boise Blaze. A good win in the end to uh, Arizona Sting. Uh, final score was 10-6. Uh, so this is DSN TV, showcasing the ability in disability. Proudly brought to you by the PA people.